Hi kids, today we're going to build our best marble computer yet, a 2-bit adder. And guess what? I figured out a way to build it with only two Gravitrax starter sets. That's it. No expansions needed. Welcome to lesson 10 of Gravicalc Marble Computers. Each week we build a new digital logic circuit out of marbles. We're doing this to learn how computers and other electronics work on the inside. In case you're new to my channel, I'm The Masked Marble, and my videos are about all things Gravitrax. I love building things, and sometimes the hard part is making my Gravicalc designs simple enough so that you can build them with one or two Gravitrax starter sets. It takes a lot of thought, and sometimes I build a marble run several different ways before settling on the best one for you to build. Thankfully, I'm able to do this because our Creator God has made us in His image as creators. Overall, all of mankind has an innate desire to create, improve, build, and make, and perhaps all of marble kind too. This creative desire would make no sense if our existence had come about in a random and unintentional manner. There would be no reason to value creativity. There would be no reason why we should want to innovate and change things around us. For where would the idea come from that the way things are is not the way they should be and that therefore they need to be changed? If our existence were accidental, why would we want to change what is into something different that we imagine in our minds? That would be a silly waste of thought, time, and effort. No, our creativity only makes sense when we consider that we were made in God's image, in His likeness, and we bear certain creative qualities that reflect God's qualities. Since God is creative, having created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, and since He created us when He formed us in the womb, then we find that we also possess a creative spark. That's why Gravitrax is such a fun hobby. It feels good to use our God-given creativity to figure out a way to build something like a working marble run. Before we begin, you'll need to be comfortable with concepts shared in previous lessons like counting in the binary number system. If you need to review counting binary numbers, go back to lesson six. And if you need to review how we add binary numbers, head back to lesson eight. As I stated in this lesson, we're going to build a two bit adder. In the last two lessons, we built one bit adders, which were called the half adder and full adder. Wait a minute. You may be asking, why am I calling them one bit adders? Didn't they add more than one bit? The half adder and full adder are called one bit adders because they added numbers that were one bit long, numbers that were just a single place value. In contrast, the two bit adder we're building today can add together two bit numbers, two two bit numbers. Two bit binary numbers have digits in both the ones place and the twos place. In other words, our two bit adder is like two adders combined side by side. There is a half adder in the ones place. It doesn't need to add in a carry bit because there is no previous place value. So it only needs to add two single bit numbers. That's a half adder. There is a full adder in the twos place. It needs to be able to add two single bit numbers plus a carry in bit from the ones place or a total of three single bit numbers. That's a full adder. So today we're putting a half adder and a full adder side by side to make a two bit adder. And we're also going to incorporate a very cool trick from my Gravitrax tricks series of videos. We'll talk about that trick in a moment. Let's quickly review our example from last week of how to add two two bit numbers. That is two numbers which each have two binary digits. We added three plus three. The number three is one one in the binary number system. So three plus three is one one plus one one. We started by adding the bits in the ones place 
just like we do when adding base 10 numbers. There are only two numbers to add in the ones place, so we use a half adder to add them. One plus one is two, which is written as one zero in the binary number system. That means we write a zero in the ones place and carry the one to the twos place. Now in the twos place, we have the carry bit plus the bits from the two numbers we're adding, which is three bits total that we need to add. So we use a full adder to add the twos place numbers. We add one plus one plus one and that equals three. Remember that's one one in the binary number system. So the answer is one one zero, which is four plus two plus zero, which is six. Before we continue, print out the blank logic table for the two bit adder at the link in the description or you can draw out your own table. You are going to be a test engineer today and fill out the logic table outputs as you run the marble computer. You'll need 16 rows to record sums for all the possible combinations of inputs. Remember in the logic table that since we're performing addition, the input columns on the left are the add ends and the output columns on the right are the sum. Notice that input A is a 2-bit number, and input B is a 2-bit number. Here's a question about that. What's the biggest number that can be represented by two binary digits, or bits? It's 1-1, one, one, which is the number 3. So if input A and input B are both the biggest numbers they can be, that would be 3 plus 3, which is 6. This means the maximum output of a 2-bit adder is 6, or 110, a 3-bit number. This means a 2-bit adder has 4 input bits and 3 output bits. That's a lot to keep track of, so I added a column on the right in base 10 numbers to remind you what each row is doing in the logic table. For example, 1, 0 plus 1, 1 simply means 2 plus 3. We would write 5 in the output sum columns, which is 1, 0, 1. 1, 4 plus 0, 2's plus 1, 1, or 5. Okay, it's Gravitrax time. Let's build a 2-bit adder out of marbles. You'll need two starter sets and nothing more. Build today's marble computer by loading this Gravitrax app code into the free Ravensburger Gravitrax app, then switching to manual mode to get the build instructions. One caveat you need to know before building. Today's marble computer will not fully run in the Gravitrax app because the app only allows one launch pad in a track. So in the app, I used a volcano instead for the second launch pad. You'll need to ignore the volcano and put a second launch pad in its place. Now go ahead and pause the video and build the track. Before we run our 2-bit adder marble computer, we need to examine how it works. There are six things you need to know about this marble computer. First, look at the two launch pads. Just like last time, with the full adder marble computer, the upper left slot of the launch pad is input A. The bottom slot is input B. And the upper right slot is the carry bit. To keep everything straight, we're going to use red marbles for input A, blue marbles for input B, silver marbles for everything else. Remember in our logic table that input A is a 2-bit number and input B is a 2-bit number. The left bit is in the 2's place and the right bit is in the 1's place. Now pay close attention because if you don't understand this, the marble computer will not make much sense. Input A uses the upper left slots of both launch pads. The launch pad on the left will hold the 2's place bit of input A 
and the launch pad on the right will hold the ones place bit of input A. Here's what I mean. Let's say input A is the number three or one one. We would load the input A slots with red marbles like this to represent one one. Let's say input A is the number one or zero one. We would load the red marbles like this. Or if input A is the number two or one zero, then we would load the input A slots like this. If input A is the number zero or zero zero, then both the input A slots would be empty. We'll do the same thing with input B. We'll load blue marbles in the bottom slots like this. The number three is one one. The number two is one zero. The number one is zero one. And the number zero is zero zero. So remember that the upper left slots of both launch pads together comprise input A, and we use red marbles there. The bottom slots of both launch pads together comprise input B, and we use blue marbles there. The red marbles and blue marbles are independent of each other. The second thing you need to know about this marble computer is that the carry bit slot of the wands place launch pad is not used. There is no carry bit that carries into the ones place when we add numbers. The carry bit slot on the twos place launch pad is the carry in bit for the twos place. It receives a carry bit from the carry out signal of the ones place adder. But guess what? We don't need to load anything in our carry bit slot because that will happen automatically. What? That's right. Remember I said we're going to use a trick from my Gravitrax trick series? We're going to use the self-loading launch pad trick. If you want to go ahead and watch that trick video now, you can click the link in the upper right. We're going to use this trick to take the carry out marble from the once place adder and automatically load it into the carry in bit slot on the twos place launch pad. It's really cool. The third thing you need to know about the 2-bit adder marble computer is the green landing pads are your output sum bits. If you only have two starter sets, then you have two green landing pads. Since the sum can be three bits, use your two landing pads for the ones place bit and the twos place bit, and then use an empty base tile for the carry out bit, which is the fours place output. In my track, I'll be using a green landing pad in all three places, which will help us easily tally the output bits. Fourth, you'll notice some marbles will roll into the vortexes. These marbles are not to be counted in the answer. They are simply leftover marbles from the calculation process. I put the vortexes in the track simply so the marbles won't roll away. Fifth, you will be running the marble computer by first pressing the launch pad in the ones place, then letting the first adder run to completion, and then pressing the launch pad in the twos place. If you press the launch pad in the twos place before the carry bit arrives from the ones place, then this will throw off the twos place calculation and you won't get the right answer. In other words, you are acting as the computer clock. You are starting one calculation cycle, then waiting until it completes before you start the next cycle. This is exactly how computers and other digital circuits work. Their clock signal drives the circuit along one calculation cycle after another. And this gives each logic gate enough time to complete its calculation before running the next cycle. The sixth and final thing you need to know about the 2-bit adder marble computer is this. After you run the marble computer, you need to take the following four steps to reset the track for the next run. Step one, reset all four switches so they are pointing to their right. Step two, remove all remaining marbles from the vortexes and landing pads. Step three, Reset the two marble cannons 
with silver marbles. Step four, load the numbers you want to add into the input slots for input A and input B using red marbles for input A and blue for input B. We're ready. Let's run our marble computer. We're going to run the marble computer 16 times, once for every possible combination of inputs. So get out your logic table and write in the results as we go. First, let's add zero plus zero. Set up the marble computer with input A and input B both as zero or zero zero. This means the math problem we will be solving is zero plus zero. Now run the track. First press the ones place launch pad, then press the twos place launch pad. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Just kidding. Of course the answer is zero, which means all three output bits are zero. Zero, zero, zero. A zero in the fours place carry bit, a zero in the twos place sum bit, and a zero in the ones place sum bit. Second, let's add zero plus one. Reset your track. Input A is zero, and input B is one, which is zero, one. Now run the track. The sum is one, which is zero, zero, one. No fours, no twos, and one, one. Third, reset the track. Let's add zero plus two. Input A is zero and input two, or input B is two, which is one, zero. Run the track. The sum is two, which is zero, one, zero. No fours, one, two, and no ones. Reset the track, and fourth, let's add zero plus three. Input A is zero, and input B is one, one. Run the track. Now the sum is three, which is zero, one, one. No fours, one, two, and one, one. Fifth, add one plus zero. Input A is one, and input B is zero. Run the track. Again, the sum is one. Sixth, add one plus one. Both input A and input B are one. Run the track. Whoa, what happened? The carry bit from the once place circuit automatically loaded itself into the second launch pad, ready for you to launch. Cool, huh? The sum is two. Seventh, add one plus two. Input A is one, or zero one, and input B is two. Run the track. The sum is three. Eighth, add one plus three. Input A is one, and input B is three. Run the track. The sum is four, which is one, zero, zero. One, four, no twos, and no ones. Ninth, add two plus zero. Run the track. The sum is two. Tenth, add two plus one. Run the track.
the sum is 3. Eleventh, add 2 plus 2. Run the track. The sum is 4. Twelfth, add 2 plus 3. Run the track. The sum is 5, which is 1, 0, 1. Thirteenth, add 3 plus 0. Run the track. The sum is 3. Fourteenth, add 3 plus 1. Run the track. The sum is 4. Fifteenth, add three plus two. Run the track. The sum is five. Sixteenth, add three plus three. Run the track. The sum is 6, which is 1, 1, 0. Okay, we are done. Did you notice anything about the outputs? We never got to 1, 1, 1, which is 7. That's because if you add two numbers to get 7, one of those numbers would need to be 4 or greater. And 4 is a 3-bit number in the binary number system, which requires a 3-bit adder to add. Our 2-bit adder can only add up to six. We're out of time for this week. Next week, we're going to fully automate our two-bit adder so that the entire thing runs with a single press of the first launch pad. We're going to add a timer circuit with a clock marble that will emulate a clock cycle in a computer. In order to build next week's marble computer, you will need to add a volcano and a scoop. We may also need a third starter set, but I'll be working hard with the mind that God gave me to try to design a track with only two starter sets. By the way, you may run into trouble building future Marvel computers if you only own Gravitrax Pro starter sets because they have fewer individual height tiles. If you want to know if you have enough parts to build any of the Gravicalc Digital Logic tracks, check out my free Gravisheet Online Gravitrax Reference. The Gravicalc Marble Computers have been loaded into the Gravisheet spreadsheet into the User Tracks tab. And if you enter your personal Gravitrax inventory on the Sets You Own tab, the spreadsheet will tell you which tracks you have the parts to build. There's also a link to launch any of the tracks into the Gravitrax app. Okay, see you next week.